Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure Services YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the best practices for deploying a RDS server. So starting off with the first best practice and that is to build the network one step at a time and performing tests at each step. Now if you wish to use the RDS to authenticate users accessing your network through a VPN network, you should test the access servers even before you put on the RDS server. Anyways, the next practice that we are going to talk about is deploying an NPS RDS server. Now if you deploy a network policy server NPS as a RDS server, the NPS performs the authentication, authorization and the accounting for connection request. Now this is true for the local domain as well as the domain that trusts the local domain. However, if you use the NPS as the RDS proxy, it will relay the connection request to a server running the NPS or another RDS server in the remote domain. Now deploying an NPS includes the planning for NPS configuration, RDS clients, use of authentication methods, network policies and accounting. Moving on to the next best practice is the prevention of multi-boot troubles. Now you should already run one single Windows server on your RDS server. Using a multi-boot configuration isn't advisable as it could overwrite your system configuration, which might lead to further complications. If at all you have to install multiple server, make sure you install separate operating systems on separate volumes. Alternatively, what you can do is that you can run multiple servers using the Hyper-V virtualization. Moving on to the next practice is the accounts database location. Now an IEA server uses the local SAM, a windows domain or active directory. However, you may not be able to choose the database type randomly. You can work around this problem by placing the IAS in the windows server and putting a radius proxy server in the other domain and use it to forward the request to the IAS server in the windows domain. So that is the solution for accounts database location. The next step is to backup the radius configuration. Now once the IAS is up and running, you must back up the IAS configuration by backing up the entire server along with the system state information. Now the next practices that we are going to talk about are related to security. So much of the security issues associated with RADIUS occur because of using a shared secret. The shared secret is an encryption key known to the RADIUS client, the access client and the RADIUS server or the RADIUS proxy. Now it is used to encrypt authentication credentials and the data itself. Now when talking about this shared secret, you must not use the password authentication protocol PAP along with the RADIUS because the RADIUS is designed so that not all the connections use the same shared secret. Moreover, it is crucial to use a shared secret. The ideal shared secret must be a random combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers and symbols. Also, you must change your shared secret regularly. Now in this context, you must be aware that you can define the access clients by IP addresses or by a fully qualified domain name. Now if you use the fully qualified domain name, then you must be aware of the fact that it maps to multiple IP addresses and only the first address will be used. Anyways, those were all of the best practices that are required to deploy the RADIUS server. Now if you still want to learn more about these practices, then you can read the blog that is linked in the description box. Other than that, if you want to deploy the RADIUS NPS server on Azure, AWS or GCP, then you can find the videos of our channel in the video cards. And if you have learned anything new with this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.